Welcome to my tutorial on how to install OpenSUSE 13.1 KDE desktop. I am a huge fan of OpenSUSE. I use it as my desktop environment both at work and at home. And I want to just go through and show you a very simple setup that I do. You might want to do things a little differently than how I do them, but I will show you the way that I do it. and. It is just a very basic setup to install this, and I hope you enjoy and learn and try OpenSUSE out if you haven't given it a chance yet. So we're going to go through, and you click Next. This is just um, just an ISO that I'm using. Uh, I'm using a Pixie Boot server, but it's Pixie Booting. Uh, uh, Actually, this is not an ISO. This is pixie booting from repositories that I set up but you c if you just went and have an ISO you can go grab it on opensuse.org or any you know any repository that has it you know has multiple distros um, so here we go right here it just says use automatic configuration I don't do anything special like I said it's a very basic setup you can add online repositories which is nice before if you have if you know what you want. Uh, I haven't, you know, I do use some extra repositories that aren't in the base installation, so that might be something you like to do. Click next. It's going to go through and get your time zone set up. And, you know, obviously, if you, it should, if you're connected to, if you have a network connection, it should be able to, uh, be able to pick it up. Click next. So we're going to do the KDE desktop. There's GNOME. Um, for OpenSUSE, I'm not a big fan of GNOME. I've tried it a, 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 a little bit, and just it's not very uh, it's not very um, supported well. And um, KDE has is just a way better experience, in my opinion. Uh, if you want to use it as a desktop, or I mean, sorry, as a server, you can go to Other and there's a bunch of different options here. I usually do a minimal server selection and from there I will once it's all set up I will install the packages that I desire for my server but we're gonna do a KDE desktop. So there's a few different options here. I do not use a separate partition for my home. You can do that if you'd like but I just go with um, an LVM based proposal and I do not you know separate it the home partition one thing I really like that's nice about um, about OpenSUSE is you can encrypt the volume and uh, I have like a 20 character password I know it sounds crazy but I usually do that I'm not gonna do that here because this is just a VM right now but when you do that um, before your operating system loads up it's going to ask you to put in that password which is nice if uh, if someone decides to uh, steal your laptop or uh, uh, snag the hard drive out out of it they won't be able to get in unless they can crack that OpenSUSE is very they're starting to move to better FS I don't know if they're going to continue that after this but at least for this development they like better FS I don't use it at all so I just go with the regular file system but one thing that is a little annoying to me that I know is when you create an LVM and it might even be if you don't create an LVM there's gonna just be a default for the file system or uh, default size for your volume and right now as you can see it, it's at 20 gigabytes so if we go to edit partition setup I'm not doing anything crazy like rate or anything but just go to volume manager and if you click on the plus and click system you're gonna see here it's only there's 27 gigs free that is not gonna be used at, at all and that's just a little annoying to me because um, I think it should be able to just automatically know that you know you're not gonna set you know if you don't choose anything else it should allocate the space for you but so here you're just going to right click it resize it automatically is set to the maximum which is nice and then click OK this is what I do because I don't 
I don't go for separate partitions, but some people like to, if you really want to specify, you know, your different odds, your different uh, spaces, you know, if you want to do like um, var, you know, give the logs more, or give, um, you know, your serve uh, directory more, you can do that here, but I'm, I'm just doing a normal, uh, you know, just a root partition. So from here, I'm going to click accept and everything is the way I want it right now. So I'm going to click next here. I'm just going to put in, um, you know, a test user and for security reasons, I do not do automatic login, but I do receive system mail. And in here, I don't change any of this, but you can if you like. If you don't, if you want the password encryption to be something different, if you want to set up uh, Kerberos authentication or LDAP authentication or anything like that, you can do that here, which is kind of nice. Um, I'm going to cancel out of that because I'm not doing anything different. Um, I'm going to click next, and I just used the password password, so it's telling me, oh no, it's, which is nice. It kind of can see if you know you have a security flaw there, but click yes. And now we're in here, and before you click install, you can add different things if you'd like. Um, if you want to change the booting or change anything, what I the thing that I only change when I'm in here is down here with SSH. If this was a server, I would click enable and open this right from here so that it automatically, when it boots up, it's going to have SSH open um, and it won't be blocked by the firewall. Um, I do that because... Um, be, so that you know I can get right into it from a different machine right away if you are using your desktop and you care about having SSH open this is a, an easy way to just quick start um, and get it open instead of having to change that once you get in so I'm not going to do that though because I don't I don't need it right now so um, from here you click install uh, it's just warning you that it's going to delete any uh, anything that's on there you click install and it will go through. I'm pixie booting this so it has to pull in the repositories and uh, that that doesn't take that long at all um, but it will definitely be faster if you just do a straight USB ISO and so that is the setup for OpenSUSE 13.1 I hope you will give OpenSUSE a try if you have not yet it's a very good system and that is going to do it for this video. I'm going to create another video just showing you the different features I use within the KDE environment, getting your KDE desktop set up so that it uh, has a nice feel. And, you know, you can, there's so many things you can customize with OpenSUSE, which is why I love it so much. And you can just make, I can show you different ways that I do, and then you'll be able to change it to what you like and um, I'm gonna go through that in my next video so I hope this showed you uh, something that was useful and that you'll watch my next video